What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today I have an exciting new way of brewing coffee that I'm really stoked to show you. It's something I like to call the Noma Kano. It's not actually called that, but I'm hoping it maybe catches on. But it's named after Noma, the place that this style of shot is being pulled. And Noma is known as one of the best restaurants, if not the best restaurant in the world, based in Denmark, in Copenhagen. And they have used for a long time the roaster up in Norway called Tim Wendelbo. Now you may have seen some of his bags on this channel before. It's a roaster that I really admire, really enjoy, and is kind of uh, one of the giants in the industry. He kind of pioneered this whole idea of Nordic style roasting, was a world barista champion back in the days James Hoffman was, and is just uh, is just one of the goats in the in the in the community. He helped Noma create a way of making filter coffee or a filter style coffee that's fast that has very high consistency and very low difficulty. So it's a way of kind of taking the cafe creme, which we've gone over in the coffee shop video here, which was repopularized by Matt Perger in the 2012, 2013 World Barista Championship. He did not create it, but he, he repopularized it and kind of modernized it. So it takes elements from this idea of the cafe creme, which has been around for a long, long time in Central Europe, and it takes ideas of kind of like an Americano of diluting an espresso in order to stretch the flavors, lower the concentration, and emulate a filter style coffee. So this coffee is neither a filter nor is it espresso, it's kind of a fusion between the two. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, yeah, that's that's been a thing, and, and you're totally right. Uh, Scott Rayo created a while back the Filter 2.0 at around the same time Tim was working on this. Now, the Filter 2.0 is a very intense kind of pressure flow profile process that necessitated the user to have something like a Flare 58 or some sort of direct lever machine or to have a flow profiling capable espresso machine. So that automatically automatically took out a huge portion of the population on being able to recreate this really fun style of making filter coffee using an espresso machine. It also was kind of time intensive. It took a while for that shot to fully process, and then you had to dilute it with quite a bit of water. Whereas this new type of no, no Meccano, which again is not what it's really called, but this No Meccano doesn't require any style of espresso machine other than a normal one. This fusion of different styles of extraction doesn't require any specific type of machine. It's just your normal run-of-the-mill machine, something like a Gaja Classic Pro unmodded, will do the trick. It doesn't really require you to have any type of profiling capabilities. We're gonna run at whatever stock pressure is, whatever stock flow rate is, and we're gonna try to manipulate the temperature if we can. Obviously this kind of, you have to temperature surf it. 88 to 93 is gonna work really well, and whatever pressure your machine is set at. Then the idea is we're gonna pull a sort of concentrated coffee beverage, sort of like an espresso, but not quite, and we're gonna dilute it. So the way that they make this drink at Noma, based off of Tim's recommendation, is by using 23 grams of coffee, finely ground, just maybe a little coarser than a typical nine bar shot, inside of a 25 gram basket. Now recently they made a post on Instagram and they said 180 wa grams of water through the puck. I think, I think arguably they meant 180 grams yield and the reason I say that is because they're aiming for about a three TDS and you need about 180 out to hit that three TDS. So I'm thinking they mean about 180 grams onto the scale, which is what I've been playing with and have gotten fantastic results. It is necessary to put a bottom paper filter underneath that basket. It's not just for cleanliness. It's not just to clean up the extraction or to help with a more even extraction, which it does do objectively. And I have in my fancy basket video linked right there, I've proved this with a lot of data. But uh, what it really, really does super well is it holds back a lot of microparticles. And then you're gonna pull 180 grams of extract in about 45 seconds. So it's actually very similar to what Matt, uh, Matt Perger did with his coffee shot, which again is based off the Cafe Creme. What he did is he took 18 grams of coffee to 180 grams of yield, and he did it in about 45 seconds. This is updosing it to make it more of a concentrate so that we can later dilute it. So we're actually gonna have a little bit of a lower extraction than Matt Perger did because he used a bigger ratio. As we know, ratio is king in espresso extraction or espresso style extraction. So, so it's gonna curb some of that bitterness the really high extractions can give us. 
but it's still gonna give us that big, sweet, kind of acidity, beautiful, tight tasting coffee we want. And with the addition of that extra water, we can make multiple drinks. The idea at Noma is they do a 23 gram dose and that makes three small coffees. After you pull that shot, then you're gonna want to run it through a V60 paper filter. Now, the reason for this is you're trying to bring back a lot of the colloids that make it through any of those kind of micro fines that go through and you're holding back any of that crema that was inevitably made. And then after that, you dilute it with around 70 or 80 grams of water, depending on your taste preference. This recipe is scalable. You can do 16 grams in an 18 gram basket or like 18 grams in a 20 gram basket. The idea is you want to underfill the basket. Now, why do you want to do this? When you underfill a basket, you're actually going to disallow as much body. You're, so essentially what those puck screens are a really great uh, thing for is you can use a smaller dose in a bigger basket and you can fill up the headspace with that mesh. And this is going to increase the body of your shot of espresso. With this, we don't want a lot of body. We're making filter coffee. We're trying to actually lessen the body to increase the complexity of the cup. And that headspace is going to really allow us to do it. It also allows for a bigger water column at the beginning. So you have a longer bit of time before that pressure kind of kicks in, which is going to really kind of help with that extraction. It sounds like a lot of steps. And for a, a one person to do this every day, it probably would be a lot of steps. And it's two different filter papers you have to have. Why not just make a pour over? Well, first off, I think you should definitely give it a try. But this was obviously made for a restaurant that's trying to crank out a lot of drinks that doesn't want to have to stand around and wait for a kettle to get to temperature and do a lot of pour overs. They can make three at a time and it's, it's, it's a really nice tasting coffee. Make one shot without the paper filter on the bottom. Then take a V60 with your V60 filter and dump the first shot through. You're gonna find that it chokes very, very quickly. So as you can see, after a few seconds of draining fine, it clogs. And you might be asking, why is it clogging? Well, it's because paper filters can only really hold back particles that are over about 30, 40 microns in diameter. And so a lot of these micro particles are making it through the small holes on the bottom of the basket. And if, even though cake filtration in a puck is incredibly efficient, it's not quite efficient enough to hold all of those particles back, especially when you consider fines migration. They come through into your cup. And so, so even when you pour it through the V60, they are, they're clogging the holes and they're disallowing that coffee to pour through. Now on the other shot, take a new V60 filter, put it inside your V60, pour the shot through and watch as it drains in 10 seconds, just like right here. So as you can see, there are a lot less of those micro particles that make it through the basket when you're using a bottom paper filter. You may not even be able to see those fines, but there are micro particles produced when grinding coffee and a lot more when, when grinding as fine as we are for espresso or this style of coffee shot. A lot of those micro particles can actually cause astringency. There's an argument that at a certain size, they don't really have any taste and they just contribute to texture. So maybe if that's the case, which we don't have really any proof on, but if that is the case, maybe you don't want that bottom paper filter for your espressos because you like that maybe um, uh, that, that texture that it arguably is giving you. Maybe when you put the bottom paper filter in, it's killing a lot of that texture by holding down these particles that might not have any flavor. I don't know. What I do know is astringency can be ground out of the coffee and it can be free floating and that could be getting into your final cup without that paper filter. Now let's actually go through all the steps for real. All right, so first things first, we're going to remove our porta filter, wipe it out, you know, good stuff. Then we're going to take our paper filter and boop, put it right there in the bottom of our porta filter and the bottom of the basket. Today I'm just using a Gaja Classic Pro unmodded because I want to show you this is doable on whatever machine you kind of have at home. We're going to take, I just like to do a little spritz of water in there. I don't like to run it under the group, even though this might cool it down a bit. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a cooler porta filter at the beginning. It actually helps retain some of those volatile characteristics. Uh, similar to kind of the cold rocks, if you have a lower temperature at the beginning, it can um, it maintains some bottles that might be lost. Anyway, I do this so that there's no kind of air pockets at the bottom. I want it nice and wet against the bottom of that basket. Weigh out 23 grams of coffee. Now remember that puck preparation is still important because we're grinding more than finely enough for it to matter. You still want an even extraction or as even as we can get. Now, once you have it tamped and all locked and loaded, we're ready to go ahead and start. So here we go. We're gonna start the timer at the same time. Here we are. Now, of course, this is gonna come out pretty fast. We're trying to get 180 grams in 45 seconds. So it's gonna come out. You can't see it because how small the clearance is. I apologize. The Gosh Classic Pro doesn't have much clearance there, but we're gonna let that run and we should be dialed into where we're gonna get 
our amount in 180, so let's skip to then. Okay, cool. Now when this is all done, you're gonna have a thin layer of crema, which is not ideal for this shot. You don't want that crema in there, so we're gonna filter it out. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of what the TDS is, is going to look like in our rough extraction yield. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this a little bit. I'm not gonna use a syringe filter today, which will make it read a little high, but not, not really high enough to cause any big issues, especially because we're not publishing this data for any type of consideration in the scientific field, so I don't think we're in any trouble here. So we're at about a 2.84, which gives us around a 23% extraction, which is super high. That's a really great extraction, very easy to get, and it's very consistent. Now let's go ahead, we're going to pour it through our V60, and we're gonna see how that changes the reading of the extraction. We have caught all that like crema and some other kind of micro fines, micro particles inside the paper filter itself. But let's go ahead and read this again. It now reads 2.71, which shows us the actual extraction yield was a lot closer to like 21.8 uh, or something like that. So uh, this is why filtering espresso is important, but because it, it does inflate numbers. But this is more so to show you how much we're able to filter out to really improve the clarity and the complexity of our coffee. Now I'm going to go ahead and add about 70 grams of water to this. I'm not going to read the, the, the TDS again because roughly 70 is going to lower you around, you know, 0.8, 0.9 percent using this this concentration all right so we got our 70 grams added and honestly if you look at it, it kind of looks like an aeropress brew very thick looking but we've been really been able to kind of like separate pull out those flavors stretch it a bit to make it more palatable and bring it down to a like a 1819 tds of course the amount of water that you're adding for that bypass can be it can vary based on your taste based on the coffee you're brewing i found that with this kenya this does a really nice job it's average. It's above average. Oh! <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is actually something I'll probably use a lot and, and it's something I think more restaurants should probably pick up on because it's a very easy way to make a lot of like batch style coffee that is difficult to mess up, very easy to make. Yes, you're, you're, you, it takes a little bit of time, you know, getting used to it, putting it through filters and whatnot, but wow, oh wow, it's a very, very nice way of brewing coffee. I prefer this to the coffee shot. I prefer this to the spro over. I, I think this is a really nice way of brewing coffee. There's like no astringency in this. I. I mean, I really enjoy it. For years, I mean, before we had nine bar espresso, we were using machines that were only creating one and a half bar of pressure. And so they were pulling really long shots and they continue to do that as the cafe creme in many, many countries. So this is not something that's brand new, but this kind of approach using the paper filter, filtering it through a V60 filter, all these things have been used independently, putting them all together, making this kind of no Meccano is a new kind of unique uh, uh, branch off of what has already been done and understood for a long time. Time. This might be a good way of serving coffee once you are out of your drip coffee for the day because you're gonna just waste it. You could just pull these instead of Americanos. It'll give a better representation of the coffee, I think, for a filter enthusiast. But as for me, that's about it. I would love it if you would take a moment, check out the links down below, hit that Patreon if you you know want to support the channel. We do a lot of giveaways there. Um, you know, check out my Instagram, all the other good stuff. But until next time, I hope that you brew something tasty and cheers.